All right, this is one you don't see every day. The Sacramento Bee uh, correspondent writing that Nancy Pelosi is the most conservative candidate in her congressional race. Um, and this after, of course, Dianne Feinstein getting snubbed at this party powwow in California to see our TV host, Ali Stuckey, former Obama campaign regional director, Robin Byro, and Real Clear Politics associate editor, A.B. Stoddard. Um, just when I think, you know, A.B., that some Republicans are getting nervous about this latest tip between the president and his attorney general and rage about all this other stuff, um, it, it could be a case of the Democrats grabbing defeat from the jaws of victory. What do you make of all this? Well, Neil, as is always the case with a party without a leader, as the Republicans went through for years after uh, John McCain's loss and Romney's loss in presidential elections, um, it's a struggle between the, the, the two factions. And we saw this kind of unresolved tension and resentment after the loss Bernie Sanders uh, endured uh, that many believed in his camp, you know, was rigged uh, partially by the Democratic National Committee in favor of Hillary Clinton. And there's a real kind of breakdown in the party about whether or not to go forward on a super progressive free lunch socialism agenda of Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren uh, for free college and and uh, beating up on banks and everything else, or, or to try to tack back to the middle and win over the voters who saw that the Democrats didn't have an economic message, who voted for Obama and then voted for Trump. And so there's a lot of this. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, though, is facing what Eric Cantor did when he lost his seat right. uh, in That's Virginia right. 7. If you're in leadership and you're a national figure and you're you know, out there um, fundraising in Hollywood and speaking at Harvard, people at back home think you're too big for your district britches and they come after you. You know, uh, Robin, the only difference I would say here, uh, the, the Eric Cantor race, uh, notwithstanding, is that calling Nancy Pelosi the most conservative is sort of like, you know, saying I'm svelte. I mean, any quick read of the situation would disavow anyone of either notion. But but is that registering? A.B.'s point, is that registering? Is there such anger on the left that, uh, that they think there's there's a strategy there? Uh, you're, she was correct to point out the anger from the left. We still, I mean, you know, I'm political director here for our local party in Atlanta, and we're still trying to to heal some of the wounds from the division between the the different factions uh, and and the younger people with the Bernie Sanders supporters. Well, do you think um, you'll be to, creating <laughs> more wounds by by going even harder? Uh, well, you know, what's, what I'm seeing, though, is that a lot of this is coming from California, and these California Democrats are just on a next level, uh, as, as A.B. just said, with the, with the far, far left. To allege that Nancy Pelosi is, is too conservative uh, is absurd. Um, you know, if anything, she's a little bit more moderate, that moderates get stuff done. I was actually impressed uh, that first budget go-round with Donald Trump, that she was able to get a temporary uh, budget deal so that we could continue to fund the government for those few weeks. So at least she's getting some work done across the party lines. Uh, but, you know, right but now the DNC is really line, struggling. You think it would be a mistake, and I, Ali, I promise I will get to you, but you think it would be a mistake to go hard left? Yes, I absolutely. Okay. I'm a moderate myself. I'm a blue dog dem. I would be a, a grievous mistake, Neil. All right. What do you think of that, Ali? And that both parties always risk that. Republicans are going through this whole identity crisis, I think, in the whole Roy Moore situation and everything else. And Maybe given that debacle, they thought better of it. Will Democrats? What do you think? It's true. However, I don't think that moderates have as, as good a chance as leading the party on the left as they do perhaps on the right. There was a very interesting study by Pew Research uh, just in October of 2017 that showed the progression of Democrats from 1994 to 2014 going further to the left on almost every single issue. There are less moderate Democrats today than there has ever been. There are more Democrats today who say that they identify as very liberal or liberal. So they just don't have patience for people like Nancy Pelosi, who is probably a very deft politician um, in her own right. They want people that are for single-payer health care, which is one of the reasons why someone is actually running against Nancy Pelosi. They want the San Francisco values, or they think they want the San Francisco, Bernie Sanders even values, to become national. That's just a fact of the matter in the party, whereas conservatives have stayed just about the same for about 20 years. All right, so real quickly, guys, uh, Diane Feinstein and the battle she's facing right now to get reelected to the Senate, Nancy Pelosi, I mean, A, B, are either in trouble. 
I think Dianne Feinstein will face a big challenge, and in the in the end, I think she'll prevail. And Nancy Pelosi is going to she she knows where the bodies are buried. I think she's going to do fine in her primary, but continue to face all this pressure as the Democratic leader. Uh, what do you think of that, Roman? Yeah, I think I agree. I think that she, she ultimately will prevail. Uh, Diane Feinstein is 84 years old, and she's held office since 1996. Um, so I think that in the end she'll prevail. But uh, there is some tension right now, Neil. Ali, your thoughts? I hope that Nancy Pelosi stays in place. I think it's great PR for the Republican Party. So go, Nancy. Yeah, well, they're <laughs> using her for their campaign ad. So we'll watch very, very closely, guys. I Better appreciate it. it.